And there you go guys, as you can see, it is on the trailer. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. And uh, you can also see, of course, it is devoid of any monitors. And uh, yeah, we had a look at it and we just, you know, in fact, we gave it a try. We tried to lift it up on one end with those monitors in there, guys, and it was so heavy, I couldn't believe it. And the tilt angle was such that the panel at this other end here would tilt down, you know, once you try and get it up to the height of the trailer, would hit the ground. So we really couldn't do that in the end. We had the planks out, we tried with the planks, here's all the other stuff that we pulled out and put in the car. I uh, forgot the monitors out, but we tried the planks and, you know, he, I mean, he had some planks and they're pretty beefy, but I sort of stood on them and they were feeling pretty bendy. And of course, this is heavier than me. So yeah, guys, we took it all apart, um, got these parts into the, into the car. And of course, that's where the weight is, right there, guys, in these monitors. Um, the chassis weren't the chassis that I thought, unfortunately. There are some Wii uh, sh chassis, but they're both 31K chassis, and they look pretty sweet, actually. Original uh, Toshiba tubes that probably came in uh, originally when the Segaverse was first manufactured, and we've got the topper sitting, peeking out the back there. So, yeah, this was really a, a bit of um, a move in parts. Now, once I got it inside, guys, um, I must admit, I started looking at all this hardware. That's a little card reader that goes in for Tekken. And, you know, I knew that once I started looking at all this hardware that I would be worried about sort of pulling this apart for parts. There's <laughs> so much to it. Look at it, guys. Even here, there's a little, little, little daughter board there that's quite interesting for the controls. Haven't seen a little board like that. Uh, in between the main cables for the down to the jammer connection. That's a JVS ca uh, cabinet. All the connections here, um, a little bit like the Sega Blast setup, uh, a little bit different. He put some labels and stickers and stuff on there. I'm going to have to work all those out to figure out wh what is what, but it looks fairly Sega standard. And then inside the beast is a lot of room. Um, <laughs> plenty of room in there look at that and of course you know you could put an, a couple of systems in here easy i mean it's two cabinets at the end of the day so you can put a number of systems in there switch them over to put a different system on either side big patch bay on the uh on the back here which was was quite interesting i don't know if that's standard as part of the verse or not we've got the power supply with a service switch and um sort of the degals and and the sound and then of course we've got the uh, the power uh, transformer to 240 volts. And uh, yeah, we've got uh, the speakers on either side. And then of course on the other side, we've got all the wiring for the, the you know, player two um, control panel. And same again on that side in relation to all the connectors. But guys, you know, it's just tons of tons of hardware in here absolute tons of hardware so uh mm, what am i going to do there's the uh oh, the speakers you can see the back on the other side so i think you know really i want to get it all connected up um a nice tekken 5 face plate and he put some new joysticks in there new samurai joysticks and buttons and, uh, and of course it's got all the original Tekken artwork on there as well guys so it, you know and he spent a lot of time cleaning this thing up he saved it out of a shop that apparently went bust and uh, he took it and he, he took it apart cleaned it meticulously and the front here we can see the uh, the Namco 256 in the background there we've got uh, the main power supply and more uh, patching of cables <laughs> and power a um, whole mess of cables, it's always the same with these Sega uh, cabinets. A little jammer connector board there, and it looks like the sound goes through there. I wasn't getting any sound, guys, after I plugged this in, um, so I'm not sure what's going on with the sound. There's the uh, Namco 256, and we have a problem with the CD-ROM with that. And there's the other side of the patch bay and a few things not patched in, so not sure why. And inside, we still had even the coin bucket. The coin meters here showing what 79,000 on the bottom and 999,000 on the top. I don't think that's right. <laughs> so I don't know what's happened to that top coin meter. They've been wound back. And, uh, and inside the, the bucket here in the coin bucket, 
um, he had all the locks and I've got the Sega keys for those so and they're quite expensive on their own and those are the lock bars and then he had all the original buttons which he swapped out he left in there for me um, and a few there was a few coins in there as well he had a copy of the uh, the Tekken CD I think he was trying it out as a copy he's got the original actually on the drive super super nice guy he gave me all these bits and pieces as well as the the Tekken artwork um, wow and you know he's a collector himself uh, just hasn't had time to to finish this project off all the other other parts um, of course the cool thing which is the top uh, flashing area which says winner missing an N on the uh, in the red there but uh, otherwise that was all complete and look the guys the plastic and everything that's the top of it that metal part but the top you know the plastic and everything is really really good condition you know there are a few scratches here a few scratches here on that topper um, that's where the LED lights come up and then um, uh, onto the display digits and then we've got all the light bulbs on top so guys let's get this thing together and have a chat about it because it's not what I thought it would be right and so it's been a couple of days and uh, you can see that I got it all back together and it's currently in the theatre and you know it really doesn't fit in here so I've just got it here temporarily but here's the thing guys, um, and it was quite funny because I started putting it back together and my wife was like, well, didn't you buy this thing for parts? That's what you said you were doing. <laughs> so, and that was true. That was the intent. But I always knew in the back of my mind that there was that risk that uh, once I get it and see it and see all the hardware and what it is, maybe I'll change my mind on it. But really guys, how can I accommodate such a massive machine? Um... Let's talk about that in a moment. The first thing I want to show you is turning this beast on and what we're getting right now. And the thing is, is I've actually only got one monitor in. I took the other monitor out and you'll see on this side there's a new monitor. Uh, and that was because the chassis was uh, gone on it. So I took that to Joey, Joe Mac, and he has since fixed it. So we actually have a... A working chassis over here this is the uh, this is the guy that was fixed so I can actually get that hooked up now I have got some concerns about the other tube which is still sitting outside at the moment and um, I may still get a replacement tube which sort of puts my cost up just a little bit but still let's turn this guy on and I'll show you what happens because there's some funky stuff that happens when we turn this beast on with the main lights I shall show you that right now I have to be quick hop up here and bammo <laughs> goes through a little test sequence and of course these are those winner lights that would win or win it would show you when you've won the games that support it and there were a series of games some uh, original model one and model two and model three and some Naomi games that actually support this topper going off when you're uh, when you're a winner playing head to head which would have been a really cool feature right absolutely and here would show the display this thing is going through like a little demo sequence and see so you're sort of showing how they can you know <laughs> do fancy little tricks like that but really and he says say Sega there but really this was for displaying the score the tally and again how cool was that you know you're playing a game head to head uh, like Virtua Fighter would have been a cool one for that and then it would keep track of who's winning and who you know the number of wins that you had and of course you get the nice uh, flashing top when you do win how cool so yeah I when I saw all that going and I realized that all the hardware was in there for that guys and you know it's working on both sides I just thought wow this thing is complete you know it's complete it's working the chassis is actually really good shape I mean there's there's some you know a little bit of graffiti on the uh, on the graphic there but other than that I mean this thing actually is damn good shape and it's effectively like having two more blasts so what am I going to do guys now here's what's happening with the startup um, you can see it just comes up here and says start program and forever sits there and that's because the old Namco 256 machine that's sitting in here 
the hard disk light comes on and then sorry not the hard disk light the uh the cd rom that's in there comes on and then it sort of goes out after a while and just gives up and starts seeking and then then stops and there's they're quite notorious for the drives failing and i've done some research on it and you can just stick in some other pc uh dvds and there are some that uh, on wikipedia which they show which are compatible but as far as I'm aware, they should be anyone, any of them should fit in there because the main security is all done through the actual um, dongle. And the dongle is just a PlayStation 2 size memory card. Because that's the thing, guys, is that, you know, when I found out that this was, um, can't really see it in here, it's a bit dark, but when I found out that this was just really a PlayStation 2, I just thought, wow, that's just... It's just so awesome, and that this would really be playing, you know, um, Tekken 5, the sort of PlayStation version. So, what can I do with it right now? Let's just fire up and put in a um, Raspberry Jammer so we can get something up on the screen here so you can sort of see the quality of the screen. And here we go. <laughs> it's so funny to see a Raspberry Jammer just sort of fire up in it, just plug and play. So, screen looks pretty nice. Um, it's got a good old uh, Street Fighter. Buttons all work. It's come off the fake Sega Blast. And uh, what can I say? It's. Um, you know, nice cheap on this side. I mean, this one did have a few scratches, but you can't really see those scratches with uh, once the monitor's in, in, in play. Looks a little bit bluer on the video here than it actually is in real life. Maybe it's because of the background lights. I'm not sure, but you can see there. It's a really nice colouring. Beautiful, nice, crisp CRT, guys. <laughs> it's just awesome. So guys, let's uh, let's put this up on the tripod and we're going to finish this video off, but I need to tell you what I'm going to do with this because I think you're going to be surprised. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, let's finish up. So what's the plan? <laughs> what's the plan with this thing now? Well, it's too big, as you know, it's massive. Um, it's awkward, even though it's, you know, it's not just big, it's just awkward because you've got to sit on either side of it as well as have the space for the length of it. The theatre really doesn't even have any long walls. I've got lots of short walls in here, so it's, I don't even know how I would fit it in. The whole thing about playing head-to-head, -head, you know, I, I thought about it in the car, and I really likened it to the fact that in Japan, you know, that was probably a cool thing that you could play head-to-head -head and, um, you know, especially in a, in a real strong competition and have all those benefits. And I, but, you know, I, I sort of knew that's what it would be in terms of the way they designed it but I didn't think that once I actually sat down in front of it and even though I haven't even played head-to-head -head on here yet guys when I sat down and thought about it I thought actually this makes a lot of sense <laughs> this actually makes a huge amount of sense I mean, have all this room on this side to play and you know get right into the game and your opponent can do the same and you know you're not up against each other doing the old elbow playing and um you know, I mean, it's cool having someone next to you. And I think, you know, even if you're doing like the side-by-side the -side shooters and that, that sort of makes sense. But if you're doing like a fighting game, I, I guess it still makes sense side to side. Of course it does. But having someone on the other side there, and it's almost like you're playing across the internet sort of thing. But then there was a number of other things that, oh man, I just thought, oh, what if I set this up so that it's actually my three or four player cab? one and two on one side you know get a double control panel set here and a double on the other side and of course you can swap those in and out as well and you could have two players on one side comfortably sitting nicely two players on the other side they share the same source in terms of the video you've got four players sitting comfortably and guys i've always thought in my mind that i would love to have I mean, you always think in your mind of course but anyway i would love to have a four 
player um, machine in here. And I've, I have looked and looked at different ones. And there was a few that caught my attention, which would have been really cool. I actually really like the NBA cabs, actually. Um, but you still have that problem with four adults standing like shoulder to shoulder. Um, it's cramped. It's a cramped way of playing, standing up, crowded. In this day and age, guys, people aren't used to standing up around machines. So even getting some of my friends that may not be like real arcade buffs to get them to stand around a machine like that uh, for any length of time, um, not ideal. Whereas sitting down here, you know, with a drink to one side and having a chat or playing head to head, especially the, the, the like even like the basketball NBA jam, for example, you know, having two players on one side, two on the other, you're playing head to head against each other. But in teams, that's just like, it's the perfect cabinet. It is the perfect cabinet. So that just solves that problem, guys. It solves me thinking about trying to get a three to four. Now, then I can set this all up for just three to four player games. Now, if I try and think of the way I would dedicate these cabinets to do different things. So that's, I, I thought, well, wow, that's definitely, definitely a keeper just from that point of view. I've still got the problem about how the hell am I going to get it in here. But that is something I'd like to do. The icing on the cake the icing on the cake was when I really thought about this Namco 256 unit that's in here. Because of course, it's a PlayStation 2. And then I thought about the PlayStation 2 and of course all the games that were replicated as arcade versions on here, which are effectively the same game. You know, and you know, games like Soul Calibur 2 and Soul Calibur 3, um, Bloody Raw, um, they, they're just amazing PlayStation 2 games. And I, you know, I grew up with the, with the PlayStation 1, not grew up, but in, in my later years, because it came out when I was, you know, in my, uh, in my 20s. And I, you know, I grew up with the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 to love those systems and the PlayStation 3. And the PlayStation 2 just had some absolute cracking games. And to play them on a CRT and play them on this sort of size, CRT, it's just perfect. It's a match made in heaven. So why not play all my PlayStation 2 games on here? And then have something that's playing something a bit more modern as well to sort of mix it up. And if I go one step further, guys, and actually put in a PC, then I could do emulation and then emulate all the, the PlayStation 2 games and PlayStation 1 games for that matter and any other console if I wanted to run it up on there and play MAME three and, you know the three and four player games on here as well just be the ultimate setup it fits it fits a void that I don't have actually in the theater and I'm, I'm stunned actually because I just you know and I have seen this cabinet before and I've just dismissed it guys because of the size of it and I just thought that is so weird it's you know Siamese twins you can't separate them uh, you're never going to find a space for them that I still have to to plan out um, but yet it is actually probably one of the most perfect machines and also <laughs> one other thing I was going to get the Sega Blast in here once I got that machine back together and that was going to be my horizontal cab well of course you can just sit on this other end here and just play this as a, a you know one or two player uh, single cab you know just ignore the other side as well so you've, you've got that flexibility of having you know that <laughs> plus head to head plus three and four players plus turn it into a PlayStation 2 or run Sega Model Model 2 or Super Model 3, you know, the, the uh, emulator Super Model 3 for the Model 3. Um, and this suddenly becomes almost, if not, the best cab in terms of functionality that I have in this room. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just can't believe it. And... You know, I got this one super cheap. I know I've seen them before relatively cheap because, again, most people just don't like the form factor. But, guys, I think I think this is a hidden gem. I think if you can get your hands on one of these, I think especially if you don't have any other machines and you wanted one machine, this, this covers a whole ton of stuff. So, highly, highly recommend it. It's blown, it's blown me. I think you can realise it's blown me away. Absolutely has. So, I'm, I'm really happy. 
until next time guys uh, make sure that you uh, play your games and find some hidden gems like this make sure you look on Gumtree and eBay and just have a look out for strange things now this is this is not the first time I've picked up something weird and it's turned out to be absolute gold so really do look hard at your uh, purchasing options you may find something just as good as this and uh, and of course until next time make sure you do look after yourself and but until then ciao for now